Land wet by a blue sea, Andreano, in spiritual devotion to Saint Andrew Apostle, is the last evolution of an ancient lineage. It was initially constituted by three houses and an ancient church, of whom only few ruins remain. The first of the three houses was called Feronzo, close to the near seashore. The second one is Cidini. And finally, Andrano, fortified around the first centuries of 1000 to protect themselves from the raids of pirates and barbaric invaders. Four important fenced areas with their four doors are in the city centre of Andrano, divided in two halves by Via di Mezzo, today Via Roma. In the heart of the village there is plenty of little and cosy streets, enlightened at night by the weak light of sticks and lightly animated throughout the day. On a quadrangular plant with a scarp wall basis, the impressive structure is adorned by a decorated ledge that goes around the entire perimeter of the castle, probably with a mere aesthetic function. The castle presents at its extremity four big towers, of whom just one circular shaped, Syracuse oriented. The circular basin can be dated back to the 13th century. With a ramp at its basis, it is adorned by a decorative ledge too, and at its top, by small arches and brackets. Together with the moat, they constitute the most ancient elements of the whole building. The two frontal towers give elegance to the entire structure. The less prominent, but also the most active one, is of Norman Sagan settlement, with a scarpwall basis and marketing ledge. The other one shows a royal balcony which dominates the square and, to remind its earthly power, there is a stone crown at the top of the keystone of the lodge, on which there is the Caracciolo dynasty's crest. From the arch at the gate, we arrive at the big atrium of the castle, characterized by a valuable acoustic. The structure rises up on two levels. On the inferior level, once inhabited by servants and workers, there were an oven, the food store rooms, the chapel next to the sacristy, the stables, the garrison scarred post, the dovecote. The noble family lived upstairs, composed by the throne hall with a matronian frieze, the royal lodge, some private rooms, the great common hall for banqueting and the armory. The convent, built in honor of St. Mary of Grace and then cared by the Dominican Fathers in 1561, is on Via di Mezzo. The pediment, beautiful and sober at the same time, is adorned by two fake colonnades, wisely decorated on the capitals, ending with a medium eight railing, decorated with another section similar to the one below but distinct only in a central rose window. It is adorned on its top by a stone sculpture similar to a crown. Its interior is finely decorated and adorned by the creative hands of extraordinary painters, rich in important religious and spiritual references connected with San Domenico and the Virgin of Rosario's cult, 
to whom two huge canvas are dedicated. The central altar is in Baroque style and, like other precious corners in the convent, it is finely decorated. A wonderful mural, located on the wall on the right side of the holy building, represents the link between the heroic deeds of the Saraceno della Torrella and the devoted cult of the Virgin of Graces. It shows the image of the Virgin and her baby holding three herrers in his right hand and the Gospel in his left hand and it towers over a church, maybe Otranto's cathedral, from whose windows terrible flames erupt and whose front door is boarded up. Here the Turks appear while waving flags representing the crescent and brandishing arms and picks in movement of attack against the big church, while in front of the portal a hero killed by the Turkish army is lying. With the death of Giovanni Antonio Saraceno della Torrella, Andranus citizens, for fear of being besieged by the Turks, invoke the Holy Virgin for having their life grazed by erecting this church in her name. The Mother Church, then dedicated to Sant'Andrea, is a reconstruction of an ancient building, probably risen in 1489. It was once used as an ancient burial site of priests and scholars, of which we still preserve the memory. The present bell tower presumably dates back to 1872. It was rebuilt after its collapse occurred on the night of the 16th of October 1819 on a neighboring house of a modest family that went out unharmed. From that moment on, a big celebration in honor of the Virgin was proclaimed. Its interior, sober and elegant, has got a latent cross plant. The high altar of the 19th century is made of lecchese stone and adorned with a lot of candlesticks. The church is enriched with beautiful statues of saints and virgins. Many other religious statues and canvas make it something precious to admire in every single detail. In the wonderful and evocative cape of Marina di Andrano, there is a suggestive crypt dedicated to Mary by the Basilians in honor of the Virgin of Atarico, a synthesis of beauty, alchemy, simplicity and spiritual depth. A little altar made of stone, enlightened by the tenuous light of lamps, is placed at the bottom of an ancient painting dating back to 1767. The crypt was in the past a place of rest and work for the Byzantine monks, inhabitants of the ancient Abbazia del Mito, that was also the place for the leather tanning. The place was also used by a lot of hermits living there, who benefited from this providential shelter to flee from persecution during the period of iconoclast fights between the 8th and the 10th centuries.
Castiglione d'Otranto became a fraction of the municipality of Alessano in 1859 is a little residential area of ancient origins located in Capo di Leuca. It is thought to have risen on an ancient place where once there was a fortress then destroyed by the barbarians in the 10th century. It is a village that originally had a language, press and Greek rite until 15th century and full municipal autonomy until 1859. It was very probably an ancient fortress whose name meant castle. Initially, the palace developed on a single level. It was the ancient owner, Filippo Bacile, who elevated it to another level, on whose facade we can still admire eight elegant arches. It has got a huge 17th century porter with a family crest, with its typical late Baroque Napolitan features. On the inside, it is constituted by wide rooms, once sumptuously furnished, in which there was a private museum with original paintings, archaeological materials and specimens of marine life. Castiglione's Holy Mother Church dates back to the 17th century, even if we don't know precisely the day of its construction or that of its consecration. The Mother Church was built and dedicated to San Michele Arcangelo, Prince of Angels, and one of the most venerated in Byzantine Salento. The church's pavement is very rigorous, even if in harmony with the context it is immersed in. The church has a single central nave in a sober baroque style. Once in its interior, we can immediately admire the precious pink and white giant mosaic. It was realized in 1871 and it develops from the entrance to the sacristy. The main altar is made of lecchese stone, enriched by precious decorations and by a crucifix. The church keeps status, canvas and ovals of remarkable craftsmanship which make it an absolute jewel to visit. The little temple in honor of Saint Maria Maddalena, presumably built in the 15th century, is outside the city of Castiglione, in a wide area called Trice, on the intersection that linked Castiglione d'Otranto to the Pressa, a little fraction of Tricase and to Montesano. Inside it has one room, where there is a little altar opposite another equally little door. Two paintings show the Virgin who is going to land on a beach, probably Marie de la Mer, with the aim of evangelizing the world. Once near the chapel, the hay barner took place, a well-known fair followed by the local inhabitants. It was instituted by Carlo of Bourbon on the 22nd of July 1752, as it is shown by an inscription on the architrave on the front door of the church. About 50 meters from the Madalena's church, 
There is a little and suggestive Basilian crypt dedicated to the Holy Spirit, realized by the Basilian monks and dug in a single block of chalky stone. Entering the cave, constituted by a single quadrangular space, you can see a central pillar whose function is that of supporting the whole structure. There is another altar carved from a single block and positioned on the right wall from the entrance. It is topped by the remains of a mural, probably representing the mystery of Trinity, the father represented with a triangle on his head, the son sitting with his crucifix and the Holy Spirit represented in the form of a dove. From recent studies, it is supposed that the crypt, far from having risen as an Italian-Greek place of worship, was born as a failed attempt of building an hypogeum, subsequently turned into a religious place. Marina di Andrano, once also called Feronzo, extends for three kilometers on the east coast of the Salento Peninsula and is a part of the Otranto Santa Maria di Leuca Park. Its coast, mainly reef, includes the area Torre and the area Botte, linked together by the Agheri Road, all over the path. In the zone called Torre, there are two attractive seasides. The first one is called Grotta Verde, for the emerald green color of its sea. The second one is known as Fiume, for the presence of fresh water springs. The Botte zone includes its namesake place, Botte, besides a little marina among the rocks to give shelter to the little fishing vessels and recreational crafts. In Marina di Andrano, there is also Torre Porto di Ripa, a fire tower dating back to the 15th century. From it, by now reduced to a ruin, it only remains its circular needed shaped basis. <laughs> <laughs> 